people somehow try to claim that dunk contest participant and newest 76er Mac McClung has been given way too many opportunities to make an NBA roster. The reality is, he's never not deserved to make any of the pro rosters he's been cut from. One day after Mac was cut from the Warriors, one day following the Warriors' Tokyo trip in the preseason, that's when the infamous punch took place for Golden State. Now, you could just say that's a happenstance, but I'd counter by arguing McClung's mantra would have improved the vibe, potentially on the day when the altercation went down. Of course, that's merely speculation on my behalf and a shot in the dark type theory. Make sure you stay tuned for the real reason though, and the cultural stigma behind why McClung hasn't secured a roster spot since going undrafted in 2021. Before continuing, just 19.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe and turn on notifications, leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops for a follow back on Instagram and Twitter. But the reason why McClung's deserved every roster spot he hasn't been given is because this man has passed every test which would have led anyone else in his position to the pros. McClung has proved to be the opposite of a chemistry disruptor. Leadership is this man's best quality. Last season, he was picked up and waived by the Chicago Bulls in December after for some reason being granted just three minutes in one game against Atlanta. That was in garbage time. Later in last year's season, McClung was picked up by the Lakers where he would stand the task during the lone game in which he received limited minutes in for LA, even fueling the Lakers to a win in overtime where he capped it off in the dying seconds with a jam. That wasn't his best game by any stretch as, in a limited 22 minutes, McClung would turn it over twice against Denver. But what else would you expect from a player getting his first bit of trust from a head coach in the NBA? Despite battling through every condition that comes with your first legitimate pro opportunity, Mack displayed his equity off the ball and ability to find and play off of the four other teammates around him when his shot isn't falling. He didn't have his best night, but came far from selling in that game in the Mile High City, finishing as a game third best plus nine, as I said, in a win. Reason I break down that game so heavily is because that's literally the only game in which he's been given an opportunity by any team in over a year and a half since entering the association. McClung would then tear it up in the summer league for Golden State, averaging 14 points per game in just 22 minutes per night in 2022 summer. That came on 49.3% shooting from the field and 46% shooting from distance. That earned Mack a spot at Warriors training camp, the opportunity of a lifetime to make a pro roster for the reigning NBA champions and make a legit contribution. People in the comments of my McClung videos last summer were rightfully comparing McClung's scrappy, engaged, and vibe-enhancing presence to Gary Payton II's role. That's how good McClung looked in the summer league. That's how good he looked in, for some reason, the one game, if you can even call it that, of opportunity he was given by Steve Kerr in the preseason. What's confusing to me about Mac ultimately not getting a spot for Golden State, or anywhere for that matter, is that with his reputation and skill set, Mac could easily go overseas and get a spot in a EuroLeague rotation. He's even said on the record that he could do that, but he wants to chase his NBA dream. So I'll be honest with you, for that reason, I can't exactly put a finger on why 30 of 30 general managers have put McClung in the G League for 95% of the last couple seasons. We'll get to my theory on that. But the most disappointing part about McClung not being in the league is that Steve Kerr didn't even give him a damn chance to show himself. In five preseason games between Tokyo and the Bay Area, Mack was cut with three preseason games left, getting exactly nine minutes in the second of two in Japan. However, even more egregious about the Warriors flying McClung out to Tokyo only to cut him with several more exhibition games on the calendar, providing them with brutal karma from the basketball gods, is the fact that in those nine minutes in the second of two in Japan, Mack was a game's second best plus 20, he shot 4 for 6 from the field as well. So I don't know why in the world they cut him, I think I've mentioned this in the past. But as the meme goes, when you F around you find out, and the Warriors evidently screwed around here with a seemingly minor front office decision, but all of them count in the end, and you gotta know that. Egregious mistake to cut him, and honestly, I'm stunned despite the Warriors setting the standards for the rest of the NBA, and McClung's reputation being impacted by getting cut, of course by the most successful franchise in the game, that not one other GM 
up until the 76ers recently, probably because the league told them to so Mac was eligible for the dunk contest, decided not to act on this man being a free agent for all these months. It's insane that a dunk contest participant who's marketable with every bit of skill and athleticism and has what it takes to be a third or second string guard in the association hasn't been given a roster spot by now. Here's the best theory behind why that potentially is the case. With GM of my Raptors in Masai Ujiri, among about every executive in the league after Toronto won the championship, looking for lengthy seven-foot wingspan phenoms. Chinese buddy, it won't be long before you're playing point guard for the Wong Dong Tigers. You trash ass motherfucker, f out of my face with that bull. Who can fill positions one through five like a Kawhi Leonard? On the other hand, Mac McClung having a dinosaur Desmond Bain type reach. Plus, let's face it, being a less than six foot three white kid has given McClung a false narrative about him. Mac's been better than a large chunk of guards in the NBA for a while now, who I could easily list off the top of my head, but we'll keep it classy. Two years at the best level of pro basketball in North America outside of the NBA, first saw Mac win G League Rookie of the Year. That'd probably get the majority of guys a chance the next year with a guaranteed pro roster spot. But back in the G League this year, McClung's kept up his production, as covered in the first class Shaquille O'Neal documented G League series. This year has seen Mac average 18.3 points and 5.3 dimes for the Delaware Blue Cats. You're going to say, wait, just 18 and 5 in the minors? Not that impressive. Well, to counter that, McClung's putting up a 58 50 85 shooting line in the G and is in typically disrespected fashion for whatever reason receiving 11 less minutes of playing time than he did as a rookie, nice going coach of the Delaware Blue Cats. Despite that lack of playing time, McClung is still maintaining the same stat line from his rookie of the year campaign. Nevertheless, he's one of the best players in the G. That is if Philly doesn't decide to hang on to him. But the point of this video I saved for right now, because Mac McClung is about to make the NBA, meaning the league's GMs, its casual fans, its casual media, look really stupid when he crushes the competition on Saturday night, owning the moment in a packed house in Salt Lake City, displaying the very mental fortitude that the entirety of the association is blasphemously missing out on. Get ready for this no-look dunk to be executed on the first or second try. I expect, as McClung said himself, to Shams, pull off throwdowns that we've legitimately never seen before, which is of course a damn near impossibility given the history of the contest, but this is the Gate City High School legend we're talking about. This man made his name off doing just what we're about to see him do. Dunking takes an underrated amount of attention to detail and all around zoned in focus, especially in front of 20k and millions worldwide. The pressure of the bright lights can be a challenging deterrent. I'd say it's just all about preparing yourself mentally and staying in the moment. However, that pressure hasn't been faced well at all by dunk contest participants in recent history, really since 2016 when we had that legendary showdown between Zach Levine and Eric Gordon at the first ever All-Star Weekend north of the border. Not only is there a real problem with the entertainment value of the dunk contest, which should be replaced with a friendly one-on-one -on -one tournament, but the skills challenge, albeit attempted to be enhanced, I think has been made worse due to those changes. The three-point contest is decent, but considering guys can't show up mentally for the dunk contest, at least over the last little while, it's been a real problem. The league doesn't set itself up well when you don't choose to or don't have the goal to choose the best players or the best dunkers for the competition. But as we see from leakouts, fluid transition catches leading to reverse in-game jams like the one on your screen, Eminem is capable of bringing legitimacy back to the competition. I'm predicting we see McClung dominate the dunk contest. If he does do just that, and you're interested in seeing 20 plus times that amount of film broken down like I just did, leave a thumbs up on this video. But the stigma revolving around Max persona is just ridiculous. This athletic phenom has been disrespected for way too long. But which changes need to be made to All-Star Weekend? Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time. Happy All-Star Weekend. Peace.